as we've seen, this motherboard has a nice little NVMe slot right here. So I decided to go out and buy one of these. A 256 gig PCI Express NVMe solid state drive. And hopefully this will speed up my system pretty nice. And this drive uses what's called MLC NAND or multi-layer cell NAND flash, which means I can store two bits per cell. And long story short, that's actually faster and much more durable than the newer triple layer and quad layer counterparts. So this thing should be pretty fast, pretty snappy, and pretty durable. Luckily, this motherboard came with its own screw. So to install it, all we need to do is pop the drive into here. Then we take our screwdriver. Bring it down and make sure it's in nice and snug. Booting our PC up for the first time, we're going into the BIOS under the Advanced tab, NVMe configuration, and we see our device in the BIOS. That is a very good sign. I'm attempting to directly clone my old solid state drive onto my new NVMe drive and by doing this I'm using a program called Ease Us Toto Backup. It's pretty simple to use, there's a bunch of tutorials of it out on YouTube and it's free so I'll definitely link it in the description if you guys want it. Our drive has been successfully cloned so we're in the BIOS now. We set it to our new solid state drive and hopefully this should boot just like the old one did nice and fast. Finishing up a crystal disk benchmark, uh, my previous solid state drives numbers are right here. They're pretty poor honestly. The drive was rated around 500 megabytes per second read and write and it's really degraded over a pretty short like six month period. So hopefully this NVMe drive is going to be a lot more durable and absolutely crush these speeds that we're getting right here. It took me another minute to set it up in the BIOS, but once I got it fully recognized, we booted off of this NVMe drive, and if those sequential reads and writes don't tell you anything, this is incredibly fast. It took me about three seconds to boot to Windows, and since we are exceeding two gigabytes per second of bandwidth, this is truly PCI Express 3.0 4X link to that solid state drive. So. I can guarantee you this revision of this Huanan X79 board fully supports the fastest NVMe drives to date. For the past couple weeks now, I've been at around a 4.1 to 4.2 gigahertz overclock, and it's been rock solid stable. So right here we're running Ida64 Extreme Edition again. The test has been running for well over 10 minutes. The CPU temperatures have just stayed around 60 degrees celsius with my hyper 212 evo and we are maintaining 4.2 or so gigahertz on all six cores and as you can see we are absolutely not crashed yet so i went into the bios under the advanced tab the cpu configuration tab then the cpu power management configuration tab and here you can actually change the processors wattage usage so under the long duration power limit you can essentially change how much wattage can be delivered to the processor and on the factory limit that's 130 watts so if you're overclocking higher, you might not actually be voltage limited. You could just run into a hard power limit. So I found you can maybe squeeze out an extra couple hundred megahertz or so if you tweak this long duration power limit. Now, the long duration maintained is the amount of seconds that you want this to last. How long do you want it to use 200 watts? So 255 seconds is the longest duration. So then I pair that with a short duration power limit of 220 watts. So what a short duration power limit is that's essentially like your turbo boost. So by having the long and short duration power limits cranked up, you should have all the time more wattage allotted to your processor. Ida64 is only registering my CPU voltage at around 1.2 volts, pretty stable. But just because it's a low voltage doesn't mean it's not consuming a lot of power. So see what I was talking about earlier with increasing the uh, power limit? 
the six core processor is consuming approximately 140 watts all on its own. So I think that was definitely the key to a higher clock stability, increasing the wattage. With all that power going through the VRMs, I decided to just zip tie a 120 millimeter fan directly above the VRM heat sink right here. So this fan is just directly intaking air onto that VRM heat sink and right now we're under a stress test and it is cool to the touch. We just finished Cinebench R15 on this overclock and our multi-core score is about 50 points up from our last review where I did this at 1041 and our single core score is just under 150 which equals an i7-3930K and doesn't quite edge out the 4770K but you can see on this chart it's at 4.4 gigahertz. So what do these numbers mean? They basically mean that for any type of generic gaming or light streaming or video editing, this is pretty good. It's about the same as a, a AMD Ryzen 5 1600, or as you can obviously see, an i7-3930K. A little bit dated, but definitely not bad if you can find one for a good price. What's the verdict on this board now? Well, I was definitely surprised by the NVMe support. I didn't expect it to work as well as it did, let alone the full-on PCI Express 4.0 uh, Gen 3 speeds. I was absolutely blown away by that. I've been using that solid state drive for a couple weeks now and it's as snappy and fast as it was when it first came in. Uh, another thing, the overclocking. I would definitely recommend a fan on the VRMs, but I am quite surprised that we could get over 3.9 gigahertz because a lot of people stated that you couldn't get over 3.9 gigahertz, but I guess by raising that power limit, and if you got a, a good enough processor, you might be able to, but the processor has to be unlocked. And one more thing, when you're contacting the sellers to buy your product, you want to specifically state that you want the newest version with the NVMe support if you want to make sure that you get the NVMe drive because I've noticed that uh, some people don't always get the newest NVMe version if they don't specifically ask for it. Would I still recommend this Huana and X79 motherboard? Well, it depends on the price in your country. Uh, if this is a lot cheaper than the options in your country, like it's way cheaper than a Ryzen or way cheaper than the newer Intel options, then sure, you can get the RAM for cheap, you get a good experience, but if you live in the United States or Canada, uh, and you can find better deals on Newegg or whatnot, I would start to go towards the newer products. But these are definitely not bad.